Welcome back. And when we last left off, we were working on these door inserts. So as I said, there was still more work to do. So here the guys are actually putting some carbon fiber down on the inside of where we had um, laid this putty and then milled it with the machine. And that's in order to reinforce it because it's not as strong um, as it would be without it. So we still need to keep the milled face, which is going to mate up with the inside of the roof mold, but we just needed some more reinforcement. So that's basically what they're doing here. A couple of layers down in there, as you can see. And here's what it's like, uh, what it looks like when it's done and just some pure ply on there. So that's, that needs time to set up and harden. Um, so it's going to be a little while still before we can actually release these uh, inserts from their plug. But uh, you can see, and obviously, still need to trim that off, so not a big deal. And here we are milling some plugs for these braces for the left and right um, rear cabin there, just in the back seats, to add some extra rigidity. But this is what happens when the power goes out. We actually lost power for a few hours the other day. And next up, here's the uh, glare shield plug, all waxed up and uh, ready to have the mold pulled on that and shortly you'll see the mold for this one is just going to be created in glass because that's not a structural component so we don't need to use carbon fiber for that one and here's the other rear uh, floor brace um, plug being milled and this one is just basically a single pass uh, using our ball mill we actually got a new longer one that allows us to go through a lot more um, foam at once so it's just a single pass there because it's just sort of lots of curves and things like that it makes it easier and there's the finished product pretty much straight out of the mill just a little bit of sanding on the edges of that uh, foam just to smooth it out and then there's some uh, glass just laid out ready to to be glassed in place and here's the guy starting out on creating the mold for the glare shield and we use the same uh, black top coat that we've been using for all of our other molds but instead of um, putting you know a layer of fiberglass and then um, two layers of light carbon and then four heavy we're basically just doing light and heavy uh, fiberglass and here's the other uh, floor brace mold finished off the machine and a little bit of a chip there in the corner there because the uh, mill actually knocked the last corner off there Here's Jeff actually putting the glass down on, on the first one and just very lightweight glass on this because, you know, this is a small part. It didn't need to have a heavy structure on there. And here is the uh, glare shield plug. That's with the two coats of the black top coat on there and now ready for a uh, cabasil around where we put the, um, the rubber channel and then ultimately glass and he's Devin welding up another platform so starting to do quite a few more and uh, Jeff finishing off glassing the second one or actually maybe that was the first one of those uh, floor braces so that you can see that just actually mates up with the bottom of the rear of the main door and then the back bulkhead so it's just just adding some extra rigidity in the cabin and here's the glare shield uh, mold with a layer of glass down, the first layer of glass down. And uh, coming out without any problems, that was fairly quick. The guys are sort of starting to get a good routine now and can move through these things fairly smoothly uh, without too many issues. So we're really starting to pick up the pace now when it comes to making molds. And next up, Jeff was uh, spraying the spray core putty on those two uh, plugs for the floor braces so those went pretty fast and um, you know pretty small not really take a lot of time to do that and we end up having about three coats on there for a total of about a quarter of an inch of putty or maybe yeah slightly less and here's the guys a little bit further along on the glare shield mold so i believe they have a couple of layers of glass down there and having a similar problem with this glass, the way it, the weave is, it was the resin just wanted to run out, so they had to thicken up the resin with some cabasil, which makes it more of a paste, and then it doesn't want to sort of drain off 
the uh, glass as much, so that solved that problem again. And so here's one of the floor braces now with the putty all dried uh, back on the mill for a final machining. Again, just using the ball mill and just doing a single pass with a tighter step over so we get a nice smooth finish or at least attempt to. We still have a little bit of play in the Z axis, which is making the finish not as good as it could be. And here is Jeff trimming off that carbon fiber for one of the door inserts. So, but again, it's still not hard enough well, it hasn't set up hard enough for us to be able to release that, so that's going to have to wait until uh, Tuesday, um, given that Monday is the holiday for July 4th. And here is the mould for the glare shield, all finished. Guys um, did a pretty good job, just got that all done in one day, and they put some peel ply on there, so we can add some um, braces on there, kind of like a stand, really, so you know it's easy to work that part when it's inverted. And here's one of the floor braces just almost finished up on the machine. Took a while to run that because the step over I set was pretty tight. Um, but I came in in the evening and switched out to the other one. So got them both done uh, still in one evening. And, uh, you know, I don't have any problem leaving the machine and leaving it run all night. Um, it runs without any sort of issues as long as I've got a path that I know is going to do exactly what I want it to do. Okay, so here we have this um, cross brace that I um, ordered used from Germany, and this is fits the engine that we have, the Audi engine. I'm actually using this to measure the distance between the engine mounts and get a little bit more geometry off there so we can uh, perfectly dial in uh, the engine mount position into our CAD model for building the engine mount because that's in process now, and you'll see that again soon. But anyway, I just wanted to show you how I was you know, using this, using the machine to measure the distances on this thing. Here's Mark doing a little bit of quick sanding on the mould for the glare shield just so it's uh, ready to have the braces or the stand um, bonded into place. So you just want to rough up there, even though we put the peel ply on there, it wasn't quite large enough area that we peel plied. So I want to make sure that it's nice and um, sort of rough area there so the uh, extra glass that we're going to put on there will bond nicely to the original uh, mould. So now the new plugs are coming sort of thick and fast. Here's another one that we just started um, this week. And this is for some um, braces that will actually hold the glare shield up, sort of add some extra um, rigidity to that. And they made, made up with the bottom of the glare shield and also with the forward bulkhead, but you'll see those later. So here's the uh, stand for the, the glare shield mold, and that's sort of half glassed in place there. And you can see it's you know pretty simple, but I did use the machine to cut it out because it you know it needs to uh, sort of conform to the shape of the mold. And here's the plug for the braces that hold up the uh, glare shield there. And you see I just did both of them on one plug, and they're just they're just flat braces with little flanges around them. So that's basically all they have. Similar to one of those braces we created before. And here uh, Jeff and Mark are just actually putting the just one layer of light. Uh, fiberglass on there so they're ready um they'll be ready to have the um, putty sprayed on there and again nothing complicated and we're going to see a lot of these because this is exactly how we're going to do the ribs for the wing as well later on and here's another new plug on the machine and this is similar to the one that, that you just saw but these are for braces that actually go uh, left and right side of the nose gear um, and help support the actual nose gear hatch or sorry the nose hatch door and at the same time, they help the gear, the nose gear, align when it retracts. But you'll see those a little bit later. And so here's the uh, those uh, plugs for those braces, and they're getting their sanding there. So that won't be too long before they can get primed and ultimately waxed and have a mold pulled. And again, here's the plug for those um, braces for the nose gear to help align it when it retracts. And so... I ran this with a flat mill and did most of it, but then there's some sort of um, curvature areas, so I've decided to finish it off with the ball mill there. And once those passes are finished, um, that one's done and be ready for glassing as well. And finally, I wanted to let everybody know that uh, up at Oshkosh there, Air Venture, I'll be doing um, a bit of a talk on um, what it's taken so far to get the Raptor um, to where we are. 
So if you are going to be up at AirVenture and you have the time on there Wednesday morning, it's 8.30 um, at the airplane uh, workshop, I'd be more than happy to have you um, come along and hang out. And I'll be just going over a sort of quick history of what it's taken to get to where we are, and then I'll have uh, leave plenty of time at the end to answer everybody's questions. So it'll be great to meet a bunch of you guys. So uh, looking forward to that, and uh, I'll be sort of putting reminders up over the next couple of weeks. Anyway, that's an update for this week. Thanks for watching.